This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. Hello and welcome to another edition of Silent Voices. Today we have a special guest host, Judith Fay, will be introducing and talking to a couple from the Battle Creek area. This is a grandmother that has lost her grandchildren and a mother that has lost her children through the system. It's uh, Ruth McQueen and Sherry Small. So let's go to that interview. I met Ruth uh, several years ago now, wasn't it, Ruth? Uh, yes, I believe so. You were that persistent lady that kept calling me on the phone all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and so finally I decided we ought to meet up and you have quite a story to tell. So you've lost your grandchildren, and um, what would you like to say first? Well, I was very devastated when they took the two uh, grandchildren away from my daughter. Uh, we loved them very, very much. They would spend a lot of time with us. We took them to the parks and uh, on picnics and different things. And every time they had a problem with their bite, well. I always took care of them from the time they were born, in fact, okay? and they just loved their grandma and grandpa very much. They used to put their grandpa's hair up in ponytails, <laughs> and we done just, well, I babysat them while their mom worked, and they always liked to come over to my our house and stay for, on the weekend, and we had a couch that made them to the bed. And uh, one little granddaughter called that the couch Betty. She always wanted to sleep there. And we had a spare bedroom. We wanted the girls so bad, we wanted to adopt them. And they wouldn't let us because they said we were too old. And you <laughs> lived in a nice mobile home park. and Yes, I did. You still do, actually. Yes, and they had a good play area. There was a playground area there where we would go. And I also had a spare bedroom, and I had a partial bath in it. And we told yeah, you them. You had a nice big double wide. Well, it wasn't a double wide, it was a good single wide, but it had three bedrooms in it, so it was very nice. And the front bedroom was, had a partial bath in it. So I had it all fixed up for the girls, and they were supposed to come and look at it, but they never did. Who didn't so, come and look at it? Uh, the caseworker, Joe Baker from Berry County. Oh, okay. So, but you had had them staying with you regularly? And oh, yes, almost every day that they was at my house, yes. Uh-huh. So did you babysit them when their mother was working? Yes, I did. Uh-huh. And... You took them all over. You took them to the fairs. Oh and yes, we took them a lot of places, and they just loved their grandpa very much too. Uh, so, and one time, Shannon, we always, when our grandpa would mow the lawn, well, I'd always fix him a, a bottle of, you know, a thing of tea to take out to him. And so one time they came. And Shannon came running in the house and said, Grandpa wants some tea. So she wanted to make it for him. So I showed her how to do it. And then she took it out to him. Then she wanted to try and mow the lawn, too. So he let her try to do that. So, how old was she? Uh, about. Probably about eight. Uh -huh. Well, that's a good thing to do with Grandpa. Right. Mow the lawn. <laughs> and then one time, uh, we had watermelon and Sandy come uh, 
come in and got a piece of watermelon. Her grandpa was out in the yard, Sandy's the youngest one. And so she said, uh, went outside with a piece of watermelon. Grandpa says, where'd you get that? And she says, in the house. He says, well, get me some too. So she went and come back in the house and got him a piece. And they were both sitting out in the yard in the chair eating the watermelon. And a neighbor lady started going by and she pulled into the yard and stopped and she got out of her car with the camera and she says, oh, that looks like something my grandpa and I would do. So she took a picture of them sitting there eating the watermelon. <laughs> do you have that picture? No, I don't. Oh, I never, that's too bad. She was supposed to bring it back to us and she never did. So. Uh -huh. But she was a neighbor, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Wow, that's neat. So you did that for quite a few years. Yes, I did, and very much, even though. And then they stayed the week before they were taken away. They spent the week between Christmas and New Year's with us. So had I known that they were going to take them, I would have kept them at my house. Sure, I'm sure you would have. So Sherry, um, you were a little north of there when things started happening with CPS, is that right? Yes. Okay. And why was CPS called? Because my youngest daughter, uh, well my oldest daughter, her dad had called and said that the girls were being malnutrition. So the CPS worker come over to check it out. And she and he said, well, you know, he said, they look just fine to me. There's no problems, no whatsoever. And the oldest daughter's dad had a, an issue with the fact I'd let her eat broccoli fresh out of the freezer. So I talked to her doctor, and the doctor said as long as she wanted to eat it that way, there was no problem with it because she was <laughs> getting it just the way she wanted it. So. I, I hear broccoli is really, really good for you. I don't like it myself, but so. But she loved to eat it frozen out of the freezer, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 Dad called, and that's why he complained to yes. CPS. Yep, because he said she was being malnutrition because I wasn't feeding her, her properly and and everything, and I was giving them the girls three meals a day, three square meals. Their meat fruits and their vegetables. And uh -huh. They'd have potatoes and stuff like that with it. And sure. So so that's how the whole thing started. Mm -hmm. And then you were working uh, in an, uh, another town and grandma was taking care of the kids. And right. And then you did move as well. Right. So when, when, did you ever ha have any fear that the children were going to be taken away, or did you feel like CPS was helping you? Well, I never thought they were really helping me. I had a feeling they were going to take them, but it was just an intuition. I didn't really think they would. I just, it was just in my head, well, why are these people bothering me, you know? I, I have no reason to have them around, and... So, uh, how often did they bother you? They were coming at least once a week and doing like a well child check with the girls. Once a week? Once a week. And they had been told there was nothing wrong with the girls and they were healthy. Right. And so they just kept coming and coming. Right. And you couldn't ever get them out of your lives. Right. And then eventually I had them to the point where they took my children because the place where I was living I had uh, roaches and uh, stuff like that in it. Mm -hmm. So Too then many. they said that was unfit for living for them. So, um, and then when we had the visitations, the, the girls were, um, we had visitation rights and when they were getting ready to say their final goodbyes, Shannon um, had made this picture that um, she gave to me, and um, she and it says Angel Mom, 
and then up in the corner it says to mom from Shannon. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's really cool. What's on the back of that also? And then on the back she had drew the picture of mom herself. That's good. And then the that's first really time I had ever went to visitation, she uh, it was for a Valentine's. She had given me this little Valentine card, and it said, to mom and dad, I love you. And then on the inside it says, I love you guys, I wish to come home. So that, that really confuses me, that at that point she said she wanted to come home, and then turn around when they turned around and took them away from me permanently and terminated my rights, at that point, they said she didn't want to come home. They said. They said she didn't want <laughs> to come home. Right. So and it makes me feel that maybe somebody had put something into her head to not want to come home. Yeah, or and maybe they had, like I've heard in other cases, they take children and wine and dine them and take them to amusement parks right. and various other things to... to well, they had took her to a, a sauna. Mom showed me a picture of where she had went one year for her birthday to a sauna. Wow, yeah. So they, they give them all kinds of special treats. So it um, doesn't seem quite fair. But, but I want to get back to your apartment. There were roaches, right? And did anybody help you with that problem? Did you ask your landlord no. to clean no. that up? I, I asked them if there was a way they could get rid of it, and he never gave me a reply, never came back to talk to me any further about it, and DHS never done anything to try to help me conquer the situation. They told uh, her. Yeah? They told her she had to find another place to live, but she had no money and no job, so how was she supposed to get a different place? Yeah, but she did anyway. She found a better place. Le well, she left later. Yeah. Yes, I eventually had left the guy I was with at that point. We, he had ended up in jail for beating a dog for animal cruelty. So while he was in jail, I got a divorce from him. And well, I she moved left back in with my mother at that point. Yeah. And then you... Um, got a nice apartment. Now I have a nice apartment, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So really, and then you fixed your house up special too because I kept telling you okay. that you you had to have a better place for them to live. Right. So well she did. Uh, when she got her apartment in Ionia, that nice apartment, she had a nice two-bedroom apartment and they told her that she had to fix one bedroom up just special for the girls in case they come home. So we did that, and they even bought them a new outfit and had it laying on the bed for them and had the dressers and, you know, toys sat in there for them. And then the caseworker never came over and looked at it. Wow. So you had two places, nice places for them to live. And they never helped you fix up the original place, which may have been questionable, but I, I know there's a lot of children brought up with right. cockroaches, and they do turn out quite well, the children do, even though we don't right. like the little critters, you right. know. So, seems very strange. Seems like if you'd had a little help, it could have made your life easier. Well, what gets, what, what upsets me is that case, okay, the um, the SS, or social services, will pay people to take care of the kids, you know, take them away from you. And they'll pay people to take care of them. But what do they do to help the mothers? If they were to help their get an apartment and help her do better, then she could have kept their kid. Sure. Nobody loves your kids like you do. You no. know, strangers and don't. They say that you're not supposed to traumatize your kids. Well, what do they do when they take the kids away from their families and away from their mothers? These kids, for two weeks, we didn't see them. These little girls were crying for their grandma and their mother, but they couldn't see them. We couldn't see them until finally the caseworker said, 
the, the kids are wanting to see their grandparents. You can go now to the home where the foster parents are and see the girls. And they promised you that you'd be able to see the girls and that the foster parents would let you see the girls. Yes, we have been able to see them uh, from time to time. I have pictures. They send me pictures of them. They have sent a letter Sandy has of me and told, and I've received some from Shannon also, that told how much we, they love us. That and looks it, really cute. Every time we get a card or anything from them, they say, we love you, Grandma. We miss you. Hope to see you soon. And I write to them all the time. And what was the arrangement? You're, they, I think they got you to sign off. Yes, they did. And have yes. you been able to see them? No. Not since then, no. But really. they tricked her. They tricked her into signing off. They, they told, did? Yes. They, they told, told me her. that if I signed off, when I signed off, that my, they would let my sister adopt them. And that is not what happened at all. After I signed off, they still turned around and let the foster parents adopt them. Wow. So they tricked you. Yes. So she said she would sign off if they would let her sisters adopt them. And uh, so they, they let her think that that's what was going to happen. And then they didn't, because her sister wanted to adopt the two kids. And then they said later in the statement that the uh, sister said that she would let the kids see their mother if she got them. And my daughter never said that. Really? Yes. They did trick my daughter. They asked her how often would she see the kids if she got them. And she didn't know that. She wasn't, you know, I mean, how often would the kids see their mother if she got them. And she didn't know that they, she wasn't supposed to let them see them. And so the daughter, all she said was maybe once or twice a year when we have a family get-together. So then they twisted that around and said, she said they would let the kids see their mother if she got them. And the adoptive parents are going to be really nice and let you see them also, right? Yeah, we have, uh, at the beginning we saw them quite often, but now she has adopted three more kids, so she has eight kids altogether. So she doesn't have time for us to see them very much anymore. I have. We saw them in July, and that's the last we've seen of them. In July? Mm -hmm. And when I did have visitation with the girls to start with, my oldest daughter come in the first time when the grandparents could come in with the visits. And she looked at me and she said, Mom, the foster mom said, would I rather live in a rich home or a dump? And at that point, you're not supposed to say nothing bad about them, and they're not supposed to say nothing bad about you. And that just kind of hurt me real bad because they don't even know, they didn't even know what my place looked like because they never checked it out like they were supposed to do. Yeah, right. Now, you haven't seen them since July. Have you called and asked? I've called and asked. And uh, Shannon, when I saw them in July, Shannon's the oldest one, she talked to me and she said, Grandma, I would like to see my Aunt Teresa, that's the one that wanted to adopt them. I'd like to see my Aunt Teresa and her cousin Kyle, because her cousin Kyle was real close. She said, I'd like to see my, some of my family. And she wants me to make a family tree for her, because she wants to know all of the family members. So I have somebody making that family tree for her. She so, asked for a family tree? Yes, she did. And oh, I nice. Have, that's being made right now. And then what I want to do is get family pictures of each one in the family. I have eight children, so I have 21 grandkids and stuff. So I've been trying to get pictures of each of the family members so I could make her an album with all of the. So not only are they missing you and their mother, but they're missing the whole extended family yes, as well. Yes, it sounds like it. Yes. Yeah. 
Did you do a lot, a lot of family things together with them? Yes, them? we I did. Know you went to they the always theater. went to family reunions with us and things like that. And when we had uh, holidays, the family always got together. So. Also, what do they do with these eight children, the other children, to get back to the other foster children in the home? What do they do after school? What do they do? Who do after school? In the foster home. I know I'm changing subjects on you kind of quick right. here, but we're getting lower on time, and I right. want to get this yeah. point out. Did you say something about they have to they come home and they go in the basement? Oh, yes. They play in the basement at the foster home. The kids go down there and play a lot together uh -huh. instead of uh, uh, while she's doing other things. And then now that she has the three old uh, little kids, the older kids have to help take care of the little kids. Oh, what is the mother doing? Well, she's busy probably. She works full time. Her and her husband both do. And an aunt lives there too, so there's three adults and eight kids in that home. Wow. So she works full time? Yeah, she's a, a dental. She's a dental hygienist. The kids sit in the and basement. And he works for Michigan Bell. Wow. And then the aunt that lives there, or, okay, the, the foster adopted mother's uh, sister lived there, and she works also. So the kids kind of come home from school and take care of themselves? And Shannon go? came home one time. She had to walk from the main highway down to her house, which is probably a quarter of a mile. And she got there early before her now adopted dad, it was foster dad, that she got there home early and the house was locked. She couldn't get the garage door open. So she had to sit out in the cold until he got home, wait until, until he got home so he could let her in the house. And she's the oldest one? Yes. Was she 12? Yes, I think so. About 12 years old? About 12. Okay. Judith, another thing that kind of bothered me when we were in court for all this, her dad, well, one time I had, when we went to court, my attorney, court appointed attorney gave me a paper and he showed me the paper where her dad had spent 10 days in Ione County Jail for molesting her, my oldest daughter, and then it was wiped right off of his record he didn't have to register as a sex offender or nothing. Then a couple minutes later, they went in, and then he come back out a couple minutes later with a whole different set of paperwork, and it had nothing to do with that on there. So, you know, it just kind of bothers me that he even had to be there when he had given up on her in 2003 and wanted no more to do with her. He called me at work in 2003 and says, I want no more to do with my daughter. I'm done. Okay. Wow. And then another thing they did was they called him into court. And why did he have anything to say about what happened to the girls when he had given up on her for three years? But when they had the final stay in the court, she was talking with her lawyer. I sat out in the room, uh, waiting room, and here he was, him and his wife, and his, his mother standing there talking to a lawyer. Now, why did he get called into that court and have something to say about where those kids went and what happened to them? Right, that does seem strange. It really does. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't get up and when I look at their pictures, every time I look at their pictures, I sit and I cry and wish and think back and say, how bad I wished I would have never done this and never lost them because it hurts so bad every yes. day. Whenever I see the girls, I always take lots of pictures and I bring them home and give give her some so that she sees her she sees the girls do the pictures. So. And what do the girls do when they see you? Give me hugs all the time, and they when they write to me, they always put hugs and kisses, and I love you, Grandma and Grandpa. And talk to us. They did call us Thanksgiving Day and talk to us a little while. I called first and then because I didn't get around to send them a card, 
So they did call and talk to us Thanksgiving. That's really sweet. I'm glad you can see them when you can. These, these children, these girls, are so fortunate to have two grandparents. Is, is Grandpa around? Can we get Grandpa around here real quick or not? But two grandparents that totally love these children, and not many children have that. You well, know, there's not a day goes by, but what we talk about them and think about them, there's Grandpa. Come on, come here, Grandpa, real quick. <laughs> Here's Grandpa, who loves these girls also. Right. And uh, you wish you could see him more too, right? Yes. All the time. Yes. And what do they do when they see you? I'll put it this way, they're going to start creating a knot. They give him hugs and kisses. <laughs> they're happy to see you. All the time. That is really great. He gave them nicknames too. The youngest one is Squeaker and the oldest one is Hot Rod. And Sandy, the youngest, used to always, when Grandpa would sit and butter a slice of bread at the table, she would sit there and say, Grandpa, I want, will you butter me a slice of bread too? And a, yeah. one time he went over to the coffee shop and she ran out the door and said, I'm with Grandpa. So she went and followed Grandpa to the coffee shop. <laughs> Wow, that's just fantastic. I hope I can do something for you. You know, um, the system is just wrong and we need to make change. Well, I don't like the way CPS comes in and takes people's kids. They take more and more kids all the time and it's devastating. I have see like, so many people just so hurt and upset because they've lost their kids. I heard that that's how CPS gets paid is from taking people's children. I think you may be right. Well, that was quite a, a touching interview that we just seen here, and it's hard to believe that the state of Michigan would tear families apart like this. This seems like a very nice and very good family. Uh, we want you to join us next week right here, same station, same time. If you have any comments, suggestions, or you'd like to be a guest in our program, you can email us at mi rights at gmail.com, that's miparentalrights at gmail.com. We also have a social network I'd like to see you join, that's miparentalrights.ning.com, miparentalrights.ning.com. Until next week, remember, your voice can make the difference.